Have you ever thought about the future? <laughs> <laughs> Is it like this? Where do libraries fit in? Are there books, magazines, DVDs, computers? Is the library still within a physical space? Well, I happen to work for one of those libraries of the future, and yes, the books are still there. We still have the magazines, the DVDs. We have the computers. We have the classes and the programs. But what sets our library apart is that we happen to have a makerspace. Now, what is a makerspace? It is a place within the community where members can come out. They can tinker, they can hack, they can make, they can, they can connect with their community. Our makerspace was funded by a state and national level grant. And our makerspace happens to include a media production lab, an audio lab, and some simple electronics. I'm the teacher in that makerspace, and I teach everything from animation to graphic design to sound design, a little bit of filmmaking, and a little bit of simple electronics. What is going on here? We go from this idea of absorbing content, so that would be reading those books, watching those DVDs that you check out at the library, to this idea of creating content through this advent of these makerspaces, taking these classes to learn this new technology. Let's consider Bloom's taxonomy of learning. On the bottom rung of the pyramid, we have understanding, we have remembering. That would be absorbing that content. But on the very top of that pyramid, we have creating the highest level of learning. So as you can see, Public libraries of the future, they are definitely raising the learning standards within a community. I'm going to share with you some stories about members of our community who have greatly benefited from the use of our makerspace, old and young. This is Mr. Robertson. He's over 100 years old. We've worked out a partnership between the Senior Center next door and the library. The seniors will come in, I teach them basic computer skills, while one by one, the seniors will go into our audio lab. Another staff member will interview them with a series of questions and record their voice, their oral history. Mr. Robertson was able to record his oral history. Not only was his recording burned on a DVD given to his family, we also plan to archive his voice, his story, within our historical collection and preserve the Gullah Geechee culture. Imagine if you could go to your public library and record your story, your voice, and share it within your community for free. This is Sarah. Sarah is a teenager and she loves to come into our media production lab. Sarah loves to draw on the computer, and as you can see, she's quite talented. She's gained a new skill and a brand new talent. But Sarah's story doesn't stop there. Sarah has expressed interest in sharing her new knowledge and her talent within our community. And a great example of this, we had some Boy Scouts who came, and those little boys were amazed at the demonstration that Sarah provided for them. They all want to be just like her. Sarah has also taught classes for us. Her and I devised a very simple curriculum, and she had a blast. Sarah actually wants to teach more classes for us in the future. This idea of having a makerspace within a public community really instills this idea of civic engagement with young people, and we definitely want to see that with this next generation coming up, giving back to your, to your community. The hottest tool within our makerspace is our 3D printer. Almost every day, I get asked by adults, 
What is a 3D printer? What is its, what is its purpose? And why does the library have one? As you can see, 3D printing technology is a form of rapid prototyping. I brought from home a toy and we replicated it on our 3D printer completely in plastic. I love to see that not only are the younger people interested in taking advantage of our makerspace, but mostly adults have the same interest. I've taught about 10 times the amount of adults 3D modeling classes than teenagers. So that is food for thought. Makerspaces don't always have to be so high tech either. It's all about creating and connecting with your community. A great example of a low tech makerspace event is Cooking Club at the St. Helena Branch Library. Cooking Club has been going on for about 16 years. Members of the community come out. There's a specific topic focus each month. They create different types of cuisine, and when they come together, they share not only their food get the, and get to taste it, but they also share the techniques that went into creating their new cuisine. Cooking Club has really helped to shape the St. Helena Island community. So this is what I ask of you. I want you to go out to your public library, attend those programs, maybe apply for a library card, but more importantly, I want you to create, I want you to make, to tinker, to hack, create a brand new dynamic experience. And in the process, I also want you to connect with your community. Thank you.